Hi, in this video I'm going to talk to you about ligaments of the shoulder complex. So I've got a pointer and I've got uh, an anatomical model that I'm going to use for this. Now not all the ligaments are located here, but I will mention some that you cannot see. Okay, but I'll go for the ones that are very visible on this uh, skeleton. So we'll start with them. So I think we'll start on the anterior surface of the shoulder. So this is naturally the right shoulder here. A very common area is the superior part. Okay, so if you're looking at the anterior, just go slightly above. And most of us know that this is the acromioclavicular joint. So this is known as the acromioclavicular ligament, okay, along here. And then when we sprain this joint, which is quite straightforward, even by falling on an outstretched arm, you can do that, then you can get a separation. And it is typically graded one to three, even though some books call it one to six. Okay, so if you've got a grade one sprain of the ligament, it's a small disruption of the fibers. Naturally, a grade two is a moderate tear, and a grade three is potentially a full thickness tear. And then you tend to have a step forming along here. So it's very obvious if you were to palpate the AC joint and you've damaged that ligament. If you go inferior from the acromium and come down, so this beak like is the coracoid process. So this is the coracoid and then this is the acromion. So if you put the words together and call them the coracoacromial ligament along here, okay? And that's one of the strongest ligaments we have yeah, within the shoulder complex. Now, staying with the coracoid process, if you go from the coracoid to the clavicular, then this is known as the coracoclavicular ligament, or ligaments, because it's split into two fibers. This one is known as the trapezoid, and it attaches to the trapezoid tubercle just underneath here. And then this is the conoid, yeah? So it comes underneath that one. So we've got the trapezoid and the conoid ligaments along here. So then they will attach to that area. On the humerus, you can see there are bands coming across. And we have three fibers of the glenohumeral ligaments. So we'll have a superior fiber, which is naturally at the top. And then we've got a mid fiber, and then we've got an inferior fiber. And basically, it's like a band. So when the shoulder is in a position of abduction with external rotation, then those bands prevent the shoulder from anterior subluxin. Okay, it's mainly the inferior band that prevents that anterior translation. We do have a ligament called the coraco humeral ligament, but it's not actually on this picture here. Okay, so it comes across. Now, there is one I want to mention. This small ligament just here, and then this one is called the superior, because it's above, transverse, because it goes across, and it's on the scapula, so it's called the superior transverse scapular ligament just here. And interestingly, there is a space just below it you can't really see it that well. Maybe if I lift, no, I'm not going to work. There is a tiny space underneath it where the suprascapular nerve would come through that. It's almost like stabilized by that ligament. We have the joint capsule, which is part of the stability structure. And ligaments are known as extra capsular structures. We've also got a ligament around the SE joint, so the sternoclavicular ligaments, where they attach from the sternal, the manubrium part, onto the clavicle in itself. That is the majority of the ligaments covered for the shoulder complex. Thank you for watching.